Cody Howell is with us today. He is, um, he served in the military. He did all kinds of exciting things and he ended up moving to Nashville, become a singer songwriter, incredibly talented individual. Let's welcome Cody Howell. From the farm that Johnny Cash called the center of the universe. This is the Jack Vale Podcast. I like Willie and I like Waylon. You want me to ride? You gotta play some George Jones and Conway Twitty. Just keep it country cause I'm here. Billy, like a little bit of hip hop and give me some man in black. You can kiss my cat. Uh, I'm here with Cody Howell. How you doing, man? Good. How you been? I'm doing good. I've heard a lot about you. Yeah, I've met you a couple times before. And yeah. um, I, I've heard your music and listened to you sing and all that stuff. You sing around here all the time. Yeah, it was cool, too. Uh, uh, Jake and everything. I was playing up at uh, Leaper's Fork at Puckett's before. Yeah. Fox and Luck. I think that's the first time I met you. Yeah, my son, Jake, over there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's right. I remember that, actually. I think it was like a... A thing where um, different musicians were on the stage or something, right? Wasn't it like a kind of like, what do you call that? Round table thing? You had like all the different people taking turns? Oh, yeah. Um, right? Writers yeah, writer's I round. I think we had one writer's round up there. I, think yeah, we did. I don't remember been. if that was the first time or not, but I remember seeing you up there then. Yeah. Ooh, that's, yeah, that's, that was a long time ago, yeah. Yeah, like it's, it's, ago. It's, <laughs> it's been a while. I like yeah, your hat. I didn't realize six. <laughs> I like. I got, I got some out the truck. I'll give you guys some. Yeah, nice. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, I I love your voice, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, you got a good voice. My favorite. Um, you got this new song out where the audience really gets involved, mm -hmm. and so, they're like, "Anyway, what, what anyway you go." Yeah, I love that song, man. It's fun recording. We got. Uh, we went over to Kent Wells. Kent Wells, uh, uh, producer, or he's my producer. He we uh, I got linked up with him after moving here, and then we uh, uh. We got, yeah, started kind of putting all the songs together there. But uh, Anyway You Go was one that was real fun because I was able to get some friends in there yeah. to do the yelling. That's great. But yeah. You, uh, yeah. did you write that one? Mm hmm. I wrote it with Jason Johnson. Okay. One of my buddies that, uh, yeah. Yeah. He's a pretty cool fellow. I kind of wrote it in my sleep uh, yeah. a little bit. Not really wrote it in my sleep, but yeah. I was dreaming and like it was like uh, leaving a Walmart or something and then there's a crowd of people or whatever and we're all hopping into vehicles. And someone can't make their mind up which which who they want to ride with. I'm like, just get in, we're going to the same place. Yeah. So that's kind of where it came from. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I wake up and you know how you got like a minute or two minutes before you forget your dream. Yeah. Well, I was able to kind of, I guess, write it down quick enough. To... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny. There's an old like Seinfeld episode about that. I don't know. Did you ever watch Seinfeld? <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. He did he's bit. like a sign Jerry Seinfeld, he's a comedian. Mm -hmm. You know who he is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he he writes jokes, and um, one time in a, in this one episode, he uh, like woke up in the middle of the night and like jotted something down that he thought was funny, and he went right back to sleep. And the next day, he woke up and he had no idea what the heck it said or why it was funny. <laughs> so he had somebody like translate it for him to say what it was, but then it wasn't funny at all. <laughs> so the whole thing was just kind of funny, but like a whole random at one like narrative or one perspective. Yeah. It must have been funny, in, and then yeah. you wake up and you think you're like, yeah, what? The but heck that's is not this? true in your case. You actually no, pursued luckily. the song and yeah. did the song. I kind of yeah, I was like, uh, kind of wrote it down in the morning, or I mean, I don't know. Whenever I woke up, I don't know if it was like, kind of at night. I'm trying to remember now. May have been that mm. morning, I think. You Whatever don't remember? I, was, I wrote it. Waking up. Yeah. I don't. I don't. That's crazy. I remember wait, waking Dude, up. I, I think I woke up, wrote it down, and then it was in, and then it, at night, and then in the morning, I started writing the rest of it. Oh, okay. It's kind of like scattered to. How many like songs compared. have you written? Ooh, like probably like 300 or something. 300 or something. <laughs> Somewhere around there. I hey. start to write a bunch of songs you don't. <laughs> You know, uh, you're, this this particular song, though, I want to talk about some of the mm -hmm. stuff before uh, music or songwriting and all that stuff, but um, this particular song has that thing where, like, in the background, where every, the crowd, like, has to participate with you. Yeah. Like, it, I would think it takes away from the song if you don't get to hear that, right? Yeah, especially playing it live, and if I don't yeah. try to get the crowd to participate, then it's, you know, there's a blank spot in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So what? You haven't been in Nashville your whole life, right? Mm -mm. When did you move here? So uh, about three years ago. What did you do before? Like, what what were you doing (laughs) at the time? So I so I got I was uh I grew up in Kansas. uh, Did an associate's degree Mm -hmm. uh, after after graduating or uh, homeschool, and uh, started doing audio engineering. And it was uh so the degree was uh, audio engineering, uh, whatever it's called, arts or. And then, uh, so I learning did, like, uh, how to record people and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Okay. And then it's, it's two years, but it was the Labette community college there in the same okay. town. Got and then I started having like a red dirt band and stuff. Oh yeah. And I ended up graduating and then was like, okay, I want to get continue to do music, but we, I kind of grew up pretty patriotic. My mom was pretty patriotic and everything. So I was just like, well, I'm still young. I'll go to the Navy. So went to the Navy, did that for seven years. And then, uh, seven years. Yeah. Wow. You're in the Navy like, for seven years. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Yeah, man. seriously. Is that awkward? Uh, when people say, not being in the Navy, is it awkward when people are like, or are like, uh, <laughs> they're like, thank you for your service? Because I heard in a show recently where mm-hmm. like, there's a bunch of leaves blowing around yeah. right now. Um, I heard recently that like somebody spoke out and was like, it's really, it's incredibly awkward when you say thank you for your service because we don't really know what to say. Is that true? Yeah, well, that... I don't know. What, what what are you supposed to say back to that, I guess? So are I guess you, it is a somewhat... You, you're supposed to say, oh, you're welcome, man, or you're, you bet, or I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> it is awkward. You're saying it is a little uncomfortable. Is it uncomfortable or no, um, honestly? I don't know. Uh, I think I think it's happened enough that I don't uh, think too much about it. Or I'm just so like... So you just kind of say, th- yeah, appreciate or, it, thank you. Yeah, I got that. it. You're, yeah. You know? I mean, because listen, I mean, the bottom line is a lot of people love this country and a lot of Mm -hmm. people feel the need to, you know, they want to like say, thank you for your stuff. That's why we have things like, you know, veterans day and you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Like we want to be able to show our appreciation, stuff like that. So thank you. (laughs) Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Seven years. I didn't realize that. I I actually Mm -hmm. didn't realize you were there for that long. So after all of that, you decided to move to Nashville. Yeah. So, uh, what, what, what brought you to the seven year point? Like in that final year where you, so I was, uh, I signed up for five years. Uh, I was mass communication specialist, went to Maryland for a while. Uh, did my a school, then got on the aircraft carrier. Carl Vinson was on that for three years. Uh, while kind of like, while everything with ISIS was going on, Really? So over, yeah, we how, doing, how long were you on the water for? The, the without, longest without deployment? land, without oh, seeing land. Okay. Oh, without seeing. I yeah. Think what's four, the longest? Forty, 40 days, I think. Forty. Forty maybe days 40 on the days. water. Yeah, but the whole deployment's ten and a half months. So you're going out there like about a year of my life. I'm yeah. living on the yeah. water. Yeah. But you'll have little three day or four day port stops. Okay. So we got Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Bahrain. Singapore. On our way back, we got Australia, Hawaii. That was pretty fun. Uh, yeah, those were. I want to. I'd like to visit Dubai. It's pretty cool. That'd be cool. Like what a, did you get to do? Like when you went to these places, did you get to like hang out? Was there like downtime and stuff? Yeah. So, well, so whenever you go to it, like you're gonna have for like four or five days that you're in port. You're gonna have one day that you're at least one or two days you're doing duty, so you're back on the ship while everybody else kind of goes out. And it mm. really is just sort of like a a break or relax like you get to go out there go to some bars uh check out the mall check out the yeah whatever you want to kind of check out do your do a little tour or adventure thing or whatever and then so everybody's everybody that gets in the port kind of does their own little thing for mm. you know whatever they find and what did you learn what did you like when you were finished with it did you feel like you were like prepared to go out there in the world and like live your life like what what led you to move and 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 decide like okay this is the end of this chapter and i'm gonna do something else now yeah so um i was gonna get out at that five year at the end of that five year stuff because i was kind of done with uh the ship and then uh uh like the special operations community was looking for a mass communication specialist so they ended up hitting me up i put my package in and then moved over to the east coast and then that was actually fun that was a lot more fun to, than the fleet side of the navy uh, and then I was, but that's what I, where I signed on for two more years. Cause it was like, I had like one year left and then it switched to a, a good three year okay. uh, contract. So went yeah. over there and then, uh, uh, I was just, I, I think I started to have it set in my head. I was like, cause that was kind of cool. You don't, you know, I was going to get out, but you don't, you don't just normally get to 
I have the opportunity to go into the uh, special operations side of the community, you know, the Navy community. So I was like, okay, I got to do that. So I added two more years and then let that run out. Then I was like, okay, now I'm going to get back over to Nashville. So I started wow. yeah, to get out and then uh, put, uh, put or use my GI Bill to go to Belmont University now for music business. So that kid. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so how long have you been in Nashville? Uh, it was, uh, August. So, so like three years and a few months going good. Yeah. 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 Uh, your, uh, <laughs> pu your publicist sent over, um, a thing, uh, that had like a few like accolades, I guess, with your picture on it and everything. It looked you. like a, a, a <laughs> magazine cover. I, th I it I, does. It looks just like a magazine <laughs> cover. It. It's cool. Uh, on some of the stuff for being on the uh, two different TV things now, and then some other podcasts and this podcast, and, and yeah. then uh, a couple um, articles or whatever. So it's like it seems like everything's starting to move forward. So. Yeah. What What was it that made you feel like patriotic? Uh, like, have you always kind of was it with the way you were raised, or like did you just feel mm -hmm. like this desire to like go and serve because you love the country? Is that kind of what it was? Yeah. And what was it about your life that made you that way? I just, I think, I think it was a lot from my mom, like everything. It was like, you know, we'd, she'd have the whole constitution stuff up there on the wall, but kind of being homeschooled too, you know, like it was all on the wall. Mm. Everything was all the way of kind of learning it about what, you know, the different way the country was made and or built. And uh, I just, you know, especially too, like I was what, like uh, eight years old or nine years old, remembering 9-11, you know? Mm. Uh, so that was just like, you know, you see that, I don't care if I'm nine years old, it's still in my head by the time I was You were eight or nine, 20. something like that. Yeah. I was 92. <clears throat> so that happened in 2000. So, Whew. or yeah, 2000, was it 2000, 2001? Yeah. It's hard to remember the dates. <laughs> yeah. But it's weird when you get older, man. I, that was, um, I was married with kids mm -hmm. when that happened, yeah, which is really a, tr that's really weird mm -hmm. to think about that. You, cause your life changes and you go. You start talking to people who had had remember where they were at the same time that you can remember, but like the age is like way off. Yeah. So with you saying eight or nine, it's just it's just it's crazy to me. It is. You don't really change when you get older. <laughs> it just, you start to feel mentally like you're kind of the same. So you talk to people and you just like like I had just said this uh me I was doing one with uh, Mac the other day mm -hmm. and um he's sitting right right over there. And, uh, and, and it feels that way. Like you meet people who's 20, they're 20 years younger than you. And you're like, it's so weird. Anyway, enough about me. Yeah. No, that's what you're saying though. Cause it's, it's a trip. And then where well, you get to a point too, where it's like, uh, like, okay. Now you're just, like, people try to guess people's age. Is that guy 30? Is that guy 35? Is that guy 40? Or if he did, yeah. you know, or however, you know, like, so sometimes it, there's a 15 or 10 year gap. I've, I have some friends that I didn't realize that they were like, <laughs> it's really true. Old. I hang out with my, my own son, my oldest yeah. son is a big age gap, but we're like buddies, you know, yeah. <laughs> so it's weird sometimes. I see. Uh, oh, yeah, so it, let me ask you a question. Since you were there for, for seven years, you probably met a ton of connections, like friends of yours mm -hmm. today, I would think, right. That, you yeah. know, from, from your service. So would you say that most, what would you say is the political party of, <laughs> of most, okay, keep going. Okay. Uh, what would you say, oh, yeah. we're going to fix something. <laughs> what would you say is like the, is there a political affiliation of most um, um, of our soldiers? Honestly, is it actually divided in the middle, like supposedly it is in this climate that we're in, like in, in the real world or in the service, is it more, is it more oriented one way or the other? And I think you know where I'm getting at yeah, with yeah, the yeah. which way is it oriented. Um, I think... Uh, you don't have to reveal any like deep secrets, but I, I, I have a feeling I know the answer, but I'm just curious. Like most of the people that you hung out with mm -hmm. and served your time with, okay. Yeah, I would like feel like more, probably more of them are on the conservative side. But uh, why do you think that is? Hmm. But well, yeah, you know, I don't want to. I'm not speaking for all of them. Sure. You know? like, yeah. Yeah. Of course. You know, of course. I, yeah. These are the, this is my my specific path. Yeah. Through, yeah. Um, 
I just, I think, uh, I think a lot of people that, I think it's maybe a freedom based, uh, like it, if you're fighting or, you know, you're, I mean, you're, you're going in the military to protect the freedom. You're thinking you want freedom. And I feel like, uh, conservative is a little more towards keeping, you know, being a free person. What, you know, what I do is what I build, you know, type of yeah. stuff. And if we'll Only see, re the reason I'm laughing at what you're saying <laughs> is because it's funny to think that like, when we go out, we walk around in public and you see somebody with like an American flag on the back of their leather jacket. You're like, oh, he's a conservative. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it how? shouldn't be like how? that. It should be like, oh, no, <laughs> we're just all truth. in America. We all. But it's weird. You have this automatic association <laughs> with, you know. I don't know. It's, it's if you're on the liberal me. side or something. It's like, no, I don't want their yeah. flags. Blue hair. Oh, I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. There's a, right, right. Yeah, there's the truth. There's, to there's that. a certain yeah. like because there's some stereotypes I feel like that are kind of have a little bit of truth to them. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe. Yeah, a lot of maybe yeah. not. Uh, we have a friend, Becky. She's she's conservative. She's got purple hair. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't mean nothing to her. So, yeah. Yeah. It's not. It's uh, it's you pretty interesting. You still yeah. talk to some of those guys mm -hmm. today? Yeah. yeah. Any of any of them move out here? Um, to Nashville, no. Uh, some of them move back, or I so some of them that or one of them I serve with, Alex. He's uh, he's from Kansas as well. He moved back to Kansas afterwards. Mm. Uh, some of them are still in San Diego. Some of the guys I know are still in uh, Virginia. I got a house I still own over there. So sometimes whenever oh. I fly over there to, you know, check it out or mm -hmm. make sure to fix something on it, then I hang out with all of them again but it's do cool. you do you like it here yeah i think yeah. it's freaking sweet yeah you feel like you're gonna and, stay here forever well i'm, I'm cross my fingers everything goes good i'm closing on a house uh what's today thursday tomorrow oh get out of it so, wait yeah. oh, well you're that you're that close yeah it's like right down the street from here from here yeah what are you talking about i'm closing on uh, a house how, how, how no i know i, I heard oh, yeah. what, what, what how many <laughs> miles away from from here is it? Would um, you say? I would Estimate. say like three miles. Get out of here! Yeah. What? Even he didn't know that. You're kidding me. <laughs> well, I've just I've been like I know. everywhere yeah, he, all month long. So I've been I, everywhere, man. <laughs> I've been every. I've been, I've been everywhere. <laughs> dude, is oh, that the coolest thing dude, you've that, ever seen? I was seeing that whenever I came in here. I was like, whoa! Isn't that incredible? This yes. this dude uh, Brzezinka, I guess, is how you pronounce this artist <laughs> name's Brzezinka. Anyway, this guy on both of these paintings. So he takes an artist and um, tries to really customize the piece. And he does this one-off piece. So that's the only piece he did like on Johnny mm -hmm. Cash, right? And then he did Bob Dylan. So then he puts objects on there that are distinctively like maybe he owned it. They have like, there's some guitar strings, I think in Johnny's hair or something like that. Um, it's just crazy like how he pieces everything together and makes it really special. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I mean, we're at the cash farm. <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited about filming here at this particular spot because where we're sitting right now was literally like Johnny Cash just hung out here. Yeah. This is his barn. Just right here. Yeah. This is his barn. Now, let me say this. Stage thing over there, to too. It's like. Yeah. Oh, oh dude. <laughs> I know. So the owner of the farm, Brian, um, kind of did a few things to make it like a little bit custom and like special or whatever. So he started putting stuff in here and he, he, um, there's like this little stage over there that you saw. So mm -hmm. do you know the history of that stage or I didn't tell you that? Mm -hmm. So that stage Same. actually came from Opryland. You've heard of Opryland. Yeah. Okay. So when that was a thing, it's built from a, uh, it was created from like a, a stagecoach. Mm -hmm. So the platform, that's why the wheels, it's those original wheels and stuff. That's but it was crazy. a stage they used at Opryland. So like some idols, man, some icons that you're thinking of right now uh, <laughs> stood on that stage and performed at Opryland. Like it's it's amazing. So he bought it and put it, set it up here in the garage. And then the pews, where did the pews come from? The pews, he probably, uh, he probably bought out some church or something. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows with Brian? But he... He's always like finding different, you know, things to kind of customize, customize yeah. it, make it kind of special, but he's got to have meaning for everything. So like these pictures are perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, this location is incredible for, uh, for a podcast. Like we were, we were talking about, um, you know, how, uh, 
uh, there's the age the age gaps, you know, these age differences and stuff like that. Yeah. But you don't really, when you get older, I just turned 50. Uh, I don't feel like that at all. Um, my body does. Sometimes I'm a little sore, you know, here and there and stuff like that. But other than that, I don't really feel like it mentally. Mm -hmm. But one thing that you and I can agree on, and you're how old? 31. 31. Okay. Yeah. Dude, you were a, literally a kid when Johnny Cash passed away. And yet, okay, everybody can agree like he was one of the cool cats of country music. He was the, I mean, everybody knows the man in black. The, like, yeah. so there's some stuff. It's just kind of neat to see that it doesn't matter. The age gap doesn't matter. Everybody kind of has the same opinion of Johnny Cash. Have you ever met anybody that didn't like him? No, you didn't. Uh -huh. Of course not. Nobody has. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it, no, dude. I, yeah. It's it's cool being here, man. He Johnny owned this place for 30 years. That's Over that's 30 crazy. years. Him and June. Like In fact, he owned it when he died. He owned this place. And actually, people... It's funny because I've talked to a couple of people about coming out here, and I've I was accused of lying one time. For as I saying said, that you were gonna have a podcast out we're here, we're doing a podcast at Johnny Cash's farm. <laughs> and uh, somebody, t I'm not making that up. This was a while ago when we first started, and they said, "No, you can't be doing it at Johnny Cash's farm." And I said, "No, we are for sure." And they said, w "I know that his farm burnt down." <laughs> like they don't know their like so he had that a, the one in Hendersonville yeah, his house in yeah Hendersonville. the house burnt down a long time ago one of the BGs bought it <laughs> yeah and, so. and he was trying to do some restoration stupid BG what what's the guy what was the guy's name if you look it up you'll find the guy BG who bought Johnny Cash's house he'll <laughs> find it for sure and he had like paint cans <laughs> sitting around and he was like doing this whole restoration project I think his name was something something BG. Huh. <laughs> it might no, it might have been something like that. And and uh you familiar with the Bee Gees at all? <laughs> a little bit. Barry Gibb. Yeah, that's what it was. Barry Gibb. Barry oh, it wasn't Gil. BG at all. But he was with the Bee Gees. Barry Gibb, BG. Barry Gibb, BG. Oh. That might be. Wow, I just put that together. You mm. put that together. It says the Bee Gees. Unbelievable, <laughs> <put> dude. <laughs> I've got my mark on my cell phone. Nice. <laughs> Good, perfect, <Nice. laughs> dude. And and it was uh, so I actually listen to this because it's all about me now. <laughs> yeah, no go. And so Why this guy gonna, says, "Sorry, okay." So you're not doing it in this barn. This if, burnt down. Yeah, people don't understand what this place was because mm -hmm. they just remember he had a house in Hendersonville. Okay, well, in Hendersonville, that house did burn burn to the ground. Uh, but most people forget that he had this farmhouse. It's 107 acres out here, the barn, the outbuildings, the farmhouse, super cool place. But he talked more about this place. It was, he wrote, literally said and mm -hmm. wrote about how it's the center of his universe. So he came out here to get away from all the, the Nashville stuff. You know what I mean? So he yeah. would, he would just come out here. He did a Christmas special out here. It's so awesome dude like watching the videos of johnny like walking around and doing his little christmas special for like abc or cbs or whatever it was and and going oh that's right here you know it's it's pretty dude, epic now it's we're pretty epic and first or sitting in here and checking it out like now i'm gonna watch these videos and i'll be like whoa yeah you know yeah yeah well that's like crazy man yeah exactly that's cool so you so you Got kind of do too so you um did I want to hear about this? Because tell me about Kent Wells, your yeah. your producer. How'd you get uh, hooked up with him? Okay, I'll tell you that, and then you tell me how the, how you end up getting hooked up with okay. that dude here. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, yeah. So we, coming to Nashville, uh, it was like the first year, and that's whenever I met Jake too, and I think maybe you as well. But just meeting a bunch of, I was like meeting probably 30, 50 people every night. Yeah, for, for about a year. So I probably had to be like five thousand people or so before, uh, four thousand to five thousand people before I met Kent Wells. Okay, Lena, uh, Lena Page. Uh, she's a she hangs out at Leapers Fort too. Anyhow, meet him and um, uh, he's like, okay, yeah, I checked out some songs. Kind of said, okay, he wanted to work with me. So it's like cool. And then uh, yeah, we started recording. We co recorded seven songs uh, that will all be on the CP. Uh, 
after Christmas music finishes. And then the cool thing was, so he's Dolly Parton's producer. And uh, wait, Kent Wells is Dolly Parton's mm -hmm. producer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So after we recorded the mm -hmm. uh, uh, background tracks, yelling on any way you go, mm -hmm. uh, like two days later, Dolly was working on a rock star album, and uh, they needed background singers on that. Yeah. And so Kent hits it hits me up and is like, hey, do you guys, do you mind coming in and singing some background songs on Dolly Parton songs? Like, no, it's like, <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't mind at all. It's like, whoa, this is crazy. So, and then yeah. uh, he's like, you know, any other singers and stuff? I was like, are there singers that were with you the other day or whatever? I was like, yeah, I can get a hold of them or something. He's like, okay. And then I, I think I hung up and didn't even have a chance to uh, call. Or he said, oh, wait, hold up a second. Wait, let me, let me uh, hold on to them right now. Don't hit them up yet. Anyhow. Calls back, says, all right, just bring you and your wife. So my wife got to be on the background. No uh, way. Singing, yeah. Uh, does, does she sing? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no way. She's in the shower and stuff. In the shower, that's she's it. She's at like uh, now, now, Purple in the Rain and all the other ones. Purple Rain? <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> well. <laughs> so in the finished product, can you hear her? Can you pick yeah, her I, out? I can't pick her out. I can kind of pick my voice out. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, cause it's so like, I think you could kind of hear it in, um, two of the ones, uh, uh, world on fire yeah. when they do this, like a uh, chant thing at the end. Oh dude, that song is incredible. Dude, hell yeah. I love that it. It is incredible. That was the, her first, uh, the first song from a new album that we listened to in mm -hmm. the car. Jake put it on and said, this is yep. the one that, um, that you, uh, yeah. were on. So you might be able to hear me kind of towards the end when they do the chant. Yeah. Yeah. That you might be able to. I don't know. I I, I okay. can hear myself, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, you know, you got to see it. Okay, is that distinct enough, you know, in there? But You'd be crazy to say no to that, though. That's kind of yeah. like one of those stories that you have forever to tell people that you know, like, yeah. dude, I'm on, you know. But Ste you didn't get... Stephanie you, was like, I might have to work that day. I was yeah. like, uh, no, you don't. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? You know, but she, I think she didn't realize really what I was... We were doing. I was like, "No, you coming in here? You're yeah, up. yeah." But, well, it's you're talking. Stephanie's your wife. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, but in but it's also because you're uh, the head of her. I mean, you're the man of the relationship. Anyway, so she didn't. It's not like she had a. I'm saying she didn't really have a choice in the matter because you. I would. I would tell I her like, what to do. Right. <laughs> no. That's not right. No, I wouldn't say it, say it like that. I no? wouldn't say it like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we this. don't have to. We don't have yeah. to. We don't have to be truthful. I gotta uh, get a. Um, uh, where are we at? I told her. Hard to get like, back on track. I was like, now. No, I was like, uh, she's like, well, I don't know if I can get off work and stuff. I said, Dude, you're gonna freaking like. Quit, quit then. Yeah. Did you tighten, this tighten up your than, mouth like that? And really get <laughs> clench those teeth together. Let me this. tell you something. <laughs> now she was, she was cool to easily uh, get off, get off work. I wouldn't say, I, I don't think I would say I'd like, I just tell her what to do all the well, time. What do you do for, she tells for me your, what, to do too. what is, what is your, <laughs> this isn't like a disrespectful question. Like is your mm -hmm. day job music? Do you do anything else to supplement or any of that? Or what do you do? Like, on a regular full time but right now it's just uh, music and uh school music and school mm -hmm. what do you do what's what kind of school music business so you're still doing that mm -hmm. gotcha got, is there like my last semester or, or not last semester or last year oh oh this is your last year mm -hmm. oh cool so is it still like you're still like figuring out all the, is it like business or yeah music business yeah music so business. everything all like right. contract law uh, you did all the en engineering law, stuff mm -hmm. already so now you're doing the music business stuff my son Chris did um he did the music engineering thing at um uh what's that place Dark Horse Dark Horse you hear that mm -hmm. place they do they do that too I think right they do the engineering thing but then they also do the business the music business school have you heard of that uh in, yeah Dark yeah we recorded a couple of the songs or saddle up it's uh we recorded that at Dark Horse while Kent was still there oh okay he was in that downstairs room for a while oh he was. Mm -hmm. Dark is, was it over near by the factory or or was it at the house the house oh um, dude that place is so rad have you seen that is, place yeah. oh jeez wait let's go back to you buying it you're gonna get a you're getting a house here close <laughs> yeah. to this place 
What, what's the uh, city? Is it Monaco? Lyles? Lyles. What's it? Lyles. Yeah. Dude, that's unbelievable to me. I was like, whenever you sent me the address and I looked it up, I was like, wait a second. Like, I'm going to be like down right here tomorrow signing the freaking. Uh, dude, I hope that works out. I'm sure it is. Dude, place. you're this close now. Yeah, no, dude. I'm like, but Gotta, dude, I, I, oh. don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I always plan like until it's done, it's done. You know? I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I get it. Yeah, I've seen some bizarre stuff happen too at the last mm -hmm. minute everything just falls apart you know <laughs> happens hap <laughs> not this time it's not gonna be the case now yeah, all of a sudden all scared and worried <laughs> like oh no you tell you got all sorts of stuff falling apart <laughs> oh no nah, it's just funny that it's so close to um yeah that it is man and it's a cool here. spot it's got a, a shop uh house and then like a little she shed thing yeah uh she shed is that what you it's gonna be yeah, because well, Stephanie's gonna have that for whatever she wants. That's cool. The shop down there, I'll probably set up a, all my tools and stuff, and then put a uh, bar in it. I want to put a little bar in there, dude. Yeah. I hope this works out, man. Where do you live yeah. now? What? Uh, Ashland City. Okay. So I've been oh. in that apartment over there for uh, kind of three years. So this will be, cool. and, dude. This will yeah. be so nice. This mm -hmm. will be great. Oh, so if you sign the papers, when do you get to move in? Uh, I think that day, man. I, I, oh, I don't dude, know. that's I'm it. So you're sure. literally at the very end of it right now. Yeah. Okay. So this whole weekend, I'm just going to be moving stuff. That's great. <laughs> dude, right here. That's cool, man. Yeah. Dude, we got a it chopper is. going over as you hear that. Yeah. Holy. Mm -hmm. Sending the crap. teens in, man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, was she in the studio? at all did you get to well, meet her or? i did get to meet her uh dolly yeah i got to meet her after we weren't in the same studio or anything at the same time okay uh, uh after you hear that chopper's a, right over your yeah. head right now <laughs> that chopper is right outside this is weird dude it's getting louder like it's about to land on the barn <laughs> <laughs> he's going ben went to go what dude get it Oh, dude. Do should we? I want to go. Okay. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> that was pretty cool. What? So what was... They were... It was a... What kind of a plane was uh, that? Do you man, know? I don't know. So there's a plane and a helicopter. Yeah, and it was... I knew, I knew they were... Was that a re military thing? Refilling. Yeah. And they were well, refilling in sure. the sky. I don't know which... Yeah, the, I haven't uh, seen that either. Uh, Yeah, we'll have to get the types of planes on there. But yeah, yeah, the... Uh, Refill, refill uh, hose. Do what? Yeah, go ahead and explain it. it was, yeah. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I never saw that before. I knew it had to be like a military thing or something like mm -hmm. that, but what kind of plane do you think that was? Man, I, my, that was I bizarre. They were memory, just like my memory loss. going in, flying in tandem like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just <towing him> in <laughs> there. Yeah, we need a tow plane up here. <laughs> we get to I ran out of gas. That's <laughs> 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 good. Anyway, Dolly Parton. So you, yeah, you, she wasn't there. Did you say she wasn't there when you were doing the vocals? Correct. But you met her a different time or something. Yeah, like that? after after the album got done. She did a release party, and so she was there hanging out. We went, just kind of listened to all the songs and stuff. Got pictures with her. And did you did you say anything to her? Did you talk to her? Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was just like awesome. Not really. There wasn't really a good conversation. It was just yeah. kind of. What's her demeanor like? She like, seems very, very friendly. Very, very uh, friendly. Uh, peppy. You know, like. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, uh, there. She was kind of the same as what you think. It wasn't anything like um He's iconic, dude. Yeah. It's crazy that yeah, this whole album too, the Rockstar album. Dude, like, the rock, seriously. Yeah. I did not that I did not expect that. <laughs> she blew everybody away. I can't wait for the purple rain to come out. I've heard it and it's amazing. Wait, what? She did it. She's doing a cover of Purple Rain. Oh, that's why you referred to it earlier. Yeah. <laughs> purple Rain. She purple did a cover rain. of Purple Rain? Yeah. So it's coming out on her next album or something? No, it's on. Or so the whole album isn't out yet of uh, the, the rock song. Oh, it comes out, just I think, some November of the song. 11. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I think they got like six or seven released so far. So Purple Rain's gonna be another single she's gonna she's coming out with. 
yeah, before the album. Yeah, it might either be a single or it might come out in the album. I'm not sure what they got planned. Wow, on. what's that going to be like? Dolly Parton Dude, sings "Purple freaking, Rain." It's awesome. I get goosebumps listening wow. to. Wow, what's like, the what's your favorite killer. song that you've written? That I've written, oh, uh, it's almost uh, most of the times my favorite song that I've written is the last one I wrote. I wrote, yeah. So, but I really like uh, the one, the probably my best one I've ever written that is a solo, co just me writing, yeah. is a uh, Midwestern Pearl, and then, but I really like Hang Ups, Heartaches, and Hangovers too. But uh, that one's a co-write. Any way you go, is that how you say it? Yeah, anyway, you go. It's a fun one. It is. It is a fun one. Yeah, I I really enjoy. It. I've I've seen you do that one live several oh, yeah, times. Okay. Because uh, the cra it's funny in Nashville, you've got this core group of of people that go out to listen to music and and go out on the weekends and stuff like that. And uh, it's funny when you do that one, they know it's coming, <laughs> and they That's automatically true. like get ready for it and stuff. <laughs> they start, start screaming it. I've seen them do that sometimes. It's gr it's great. It's so yes, yeah, cool. Because right, it gets in the same. A lot of times it's the same. Um, uh, yeah, some of the core. Uh, yeah, what do you, what would you call that core audience or something that kind of is out each night? I don't. Yeah, core. Yeah, I the think core uh, audience like I, they you, kind of remember it, and then mm -hmm. then more people get involved, and then more people get involved, and more. So each time it just kind of keeps building. Yeah, you know, you you have uh, you have an album coming out soon. Uh, trying to shoot for like uh, February or April. So we got this single put out, mm -hmm. and we'll do Midwestern Pearl. I think in January. And then, then, then we either might put one more single out, and then the album, or and it's a seven song EP album. I don't yeah. probably, I don't know, one more song. I guess you could probably call it an album, but so I guess cool. it'd just be a long EP. Yeah, yeah. Is the is that is any way you is that song out like now? Any way you go? Yeah. Download. You can yeah, download. It's out, it. it's out. We got it. Dude, on, we just. I, we've on listened Spotify, to it. Apple. We've listened to it a hundred <laughs> times in the cool. car. Yeah, it's Sweet. so so good. So what was it? <clears throat> you grew up in a like a Christian home, mm -hmm. didn't you? Because you yep. said your pa your dad was a pastor yeah, or a yeah, preacher Baptist, or something. Uh, fundamental Baptist preacher, yeah. What's the difference between yeah. a fundamental Baptist <laughs> and a regular Baptist? Um, or like I think regular Baptist, or I think that's like Southern Baptist, right? I think. Oh, okay. Well, I think what would that would that be right? I'm only familiar with Southern Baptist. Okay, that's only fundamental Baptists are just a little stricter. So it's like okay. some stuff like this. So like, like the women have to wear long dresses. Yeah, but and have to have long straight hair. But it's not like have to have to like. Uh, so like some of the families in in our church, would, the women would wear uh, dresses or whatever. Some of them, but some of them still didn't because they just they could wear no makeup. I don't know about all the makeup stuff. Oh. I think they I think they still wore makeup. What was it but like? It was like and did your mom wear makeup? I think she did. Okay. I think she did. Pretty sure they wore makeup. Hmm. I'm trying to remember. I don't. I never like went yeah. in there to see if. Is is your dad still makeup. a preacher today? Uh huh. Same church. At the same church. Yeah. So he's been a preacher for like 32 years at that church. So that was your. Um, did you ever? Did you kind of end up in that same vein of everything that you've been taught? Would you say like are those the things that you believe today? Did you did you mm. change at all? Yeah, well, I, no, I believe a little differently on stuff. So, like, um, one of the things that we, like, like uh, we went, we couldn't go to, like, movie theaters and stuff like that. And then, um, uh, like, the why rec was, center after 3 o'clock, couldn't go to that because the swimming pool Why do you open. think that was, that, <laughs> like, couldn't go to the movie theater? Uh, just because it sports Hollywood and all the all the different stuff that they didn't mm. like in uh, films. I, I was uh, I was raised in the Assemblies of God Church, and I mm -hmm. remember uh, denomination. And there there are very few things that are actually different between the Assemblies of God and Baptists, uh, for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, there there's a few things, but I remember when the movie E.T. came out yeah. when I was a kid, <laughs> and now it would be like nothing. But back then it was a really big deal because E.T. Did you ever see it? Yeah, the e ET e phone home or probably, yeah, ET yeah. phone home. He's yeah, you got it. You, okay, <laughs> uh, he does. His finger lights up, mm -hmm. and he heals a like a cut or something on Elliot on the other the kid. Yeah, and uh, it heals his finger, 
That was a big deal. Everybody was talking about that. The whole church community was like, Jesus is the only one who heals, you know? <laughs> and uh, like... so they're like, E.T.'s evil. Don't go see E.T. And uh, my, uh, my uh, stepdad at the Jesus time, he, he insisted that nobody can go see E.T. You can't go see E.T. because okay. very hardcore, you know, in the church. I loved him dearly to this day, you know, it's an incredible man, but he was very serious about not going to see E.T. <laughs> so one day my mom and him had divorced. No, they hadn't divorced yet, but he had to go to the church to take care of some business for a few hours. So my mother was like, I'm going to take this boy to go see E.T. <laughs> so mm -hmm. she took me to the theater behind his back. Dang. And, uh, and we got to see E.T. I will never, I will never forget that. But I remember That's, being uh, sitting there in the theater watching it and feeling bad, like I was doing something like you're wrong. Doing something bad. For yeah, Washington. like I shouldn't be in the movie theater because the movie theater is an <laughs> evil place to be. Anyway, That's, and uh, uh, but he ended up. I don't. He never. Yeah, he never found out about that. He never, never knew about that. But yeah, it's funny, man. Churches have sort of, in a way, have come a long ways over the over the yeah. course of the years. Well, and I think I think like my parents have even kind of changed uh, their thoughts on some things. I you know I can't speak for them, but for like, what they are. Yeah, well, I mean, so here's like the, any way you go, right? That song it mm -hmm. goes any way you go. We're all going to the same place to mm -hmm. bonfire for Friday night, throwing mm -hmm. down our tailgates. It's mm -hmm. not meaning that no salvation. Did they comment good. on that? So I've had a few people comment on it, and I'm just like, oh, I didn't take like, it that way at all. Yeah, no, it's not supposed to be taken no, that way. No. It's not what that means. You're, like, just, you're going out with your buddies. are in their brains, yeah. and they just only think that, you know, it's the same oh, thing like, man. oh, Jesus, shit, only Jesus heals, you know, touch yeah. the <laughs> ET thing. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, dude, gosh. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, but, yeah, man, there's a... Uh, it's like a magician, a though. It's, it. There's magic and stuff like that that doesn't have to tie into Christianity. Like when a, mm -hmm. uh, a magician, you know, might have a trick with cards or something like that, and he'll know the card that you picked or whatever. And that's because it's a magic trick, not because, you know, it's, you don't have nobody's saying like only Jesus could have known that card. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. I think. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was, uh, but my brain, it, so as as much as uh, like uh, yeah, kind of coming out of that, my brain's changed. Of, it's not always, you know, believed in the same thing that you've grown up on. Yeah, and I think, uh, yeah, it's so crazy. It seems like churches have come, you know, like you were saying, which is, just, it, dude, uh, everything. I remember. I also remember you did not bring coffee into the auditorium. You did not bring it into the sanctuary mm. for church. None of these. None of these people know what I'm talking. They're all young people. We've always had coffee in church. When I grew up, there there was no such thing. Okay. In fact, there was it was so anti coffee <laughs> that it actually pissed me off a little bit as I got older. And I was in my I, I, I was in my probably early thirties, late twenties or something. And people started like you'd walk into the lobby of churches, the the foyer. You know, yeah, when you'd see like area. coffee and like donuts. donuts, you don't eat donuts and drink coffee in church. What are these? <laughs> these people are crazy, you know, <laughs> and I, I, uh, I still struggle with it every once in a while. I'll go into a church and I'll be even in my own church. Uh, mm. That's that that happens, you know, so it's it just feels weird, I think, because we get mixed up in tradition. Yeah, sometimes and we go, well, I'm uncomfortable with change and difference because this is all I've ever known. Mm -hmm. And and at one point, I remember like maybe 10, 15 years ago, I started thinking about it and I went and I questioned my own reality. Like, do I believe this because it's right? Like, is this, do I believe this because the Bible says it or because I heard a preacher say it or it's just been like this? So is it a traditional thing or is it an actual, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's weird, man. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. On it's the changed tradition a lot. things. Cause then mm -hmm. it's like, wait, why are we still doing this? Why are we, this doesn't work with this. This that, and that, sometimes yeah. that is what kind of ends up making it, uh, pro progress or yeah. what, I don't know, however you want to say it, but change, but yeah. Yeah, man. That's, uh, freaking 
It's because some of the tra traditions are good because it's your foundation, right? And so yeah. at that yeah. point, you want to keep that foundation solid. So you don't want to change too much to the foundation and then stuff go down. But then what parts are part of the foundation that need to be changed at this point? Yeah. Like, back in the day, that tradition may have been used for something, you know? Yeah. Like, so like... I don't want to say this, but all right, check this out. But I do kind of want to say it because I was thinking. Say it. Say it. I don't hear it. Uh, like, you know how there's a, like a bunch of wars a long time ago and stuff? And people are like, yeah, that's brutal. It's, but might kind of needed to happen because there was more uncivil, uncivility, or however you say it. And so that kind of probably needed to happen mm. to get to where to slowly get better. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. That's interesting that you say that. I want you to finish what you're going to say, mm -hmm. but I, I do remember just the other day hearing somebody on the radio talking about, like they said something really, really out, kind of out there. It felt like it was out there when they said that like, I think this current war that might be about to happen needs to happen because we've gone so far over the edge. And I thought mm -hmm. that that's interesting. I never hadn't really thought about it, but is that kind of like what you're saying? Like, Mm, well, I don't want to, so I don't want to try to predict yeah. the future yeah. part, but yeah. I can yeah. look into history and see what some of them have, how some of them have improved. And so I do feel like they probably needed to happen. I mean, it would be the same thing as like getting a, uh, like, how are you going to get or create a government or create some type of uh, thing to be civil in? Otherwise, you know, your cowboys and Indians are, you know, you're just walking into this saloon, someone pisses you off, you're yeah. You know, so there's got to yeah. be some types of wars in order to get past that type of stuff. Yeah. So like yeah. all the different wars kind of, and it's always been disputes, 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 but some, you know, I think sometimes it's uh, for the better. And I don't know, too, I wouldn't want to, it's every day is a different day for future stuff. So I don't know, but which war <laughs> is going to. Yeah. Is if it's gonna be needed, or if there's other ways to go around not needing the war, but yeah, what do you think on that? I think I think I think this is uh, some shaky ground yeah. <laughs> right now, man. Yeah, it is kind of. <laughs> uh, there's so many things I want to say. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I, I listen. I I mean, I've been around for a long time too, and and I've seen I've seen so much. Like I remember being a little kid, and adults, uh, all adults were like old people. You know, mm -hmm. they were all just like, you know, back in my day, you know, <laughs> and, and as a kid, you don't care. Like, OK, I just know I'm just concerned about my day, you know, like yeah. how things are today. But here I am mm. looking back on time and I realize how far back I go. And I'm like, I was born in 1973. So uh, I I was raised during, you know, the Reagan era and then Bush and, you know, and, and Clinton. And I, I remember all of the, the different leaders that we had. The thing that I remember the most is I remember feeling like if you were a Democrat or a Republican, that, that was fine. You could disagree and you could still go out and mm. hang out. I remember that because, um, now, most most Christians, you know, I grew up in the church, so most most Christians were stereotypically Republican because Republicans were the ones who, again, typically stood up for things according to Scripture. That's just how it's always been. Yeah. Um, but that said, there's always been different belief systems in people, and you could still, almost like two attorneys, fight, you know, fighting it out in court and then going out and having dinner afterwards. It was kind of like that. And it's, uh, you don't really see that anymore. You just, yeah, no, now it's like, you, you know, you, you got, if you don't believe what I believe, freaking, you know, yeah. but everybody's gone so oh, completely to that side yeah, so far, far that like you can't said. have middle ground mm -hmm. because there's it's really, it's harder to compromise on stuff today. And then, and then <clears throat> the whole, Oh, this is what I think, Cody. I actually think that there's so much information available to us now mm -hmm. at a moment's notice like that. Whereas before, when I was growing up, yeah. you, you waited for the newspaper to come or the nightly news. And that meant you didn't see the news except for about 30 minutes when you woke up in the morning and it was local news. Yeah. Okay. And then, or at night, hmm. 
during dinner or after dinner, you'd watch it for about a half hour. That was your news. Now it's Fox News, CNN, it's everything all day long and you get it whenever you want it and you have your phones in your hands. So what's happening is I'm noticing that people, you know, with, with Twitter X or whatever they're calling it now and Facebook and everything, you can have access to everything all day long. And in the process of not just getting that information quicker now, we're also finding out how crooked the system is. Ooh, yeah. We're, we're finding out that the government is not like when I was a kid, people kind of had this general, the government's looking out for us theory. Yeah. Or, right? Because that's yeah. what we were told. And now we're like, oh, they're all a bunch of crooked <laughs> you know, deep pocketed. Yeah. We know what's going on here. And it's like that on both sides. It sucks. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, Oliver Anthony. Okay. What a story that guy has, mm -hmm. right? You know who that is? Yeah. What, what a story that guy has about how quickly he like all of a sudden just exploded and he exploded because he came out Songs with a song about, yeah. that was relatable to people. And they were like, Oh yeah, my payday does suck. You know, <laughs> they're like listening to the words and going, wow, here's just like a, blue collar, like regular dude out in Virginia. And it, it felt, you know, like everybody could kind of collectively relate to what he was talking about. Do you think though, so Tell like, me. do you think that, okay. So if the, uh, like, you know, people in government and a lot of that, there's a bunch of corruption. Do you think that's just generally with people though? Like, like out of, let's say you got 10 friends or, or, out of all the people you know, what percentage of the, them do you think would be 100% good in office? Because I feel like maybe 10 or 20% of people I know would even be in, have enough integrity to actually run it perfect. Like, because I mean, like, how, how are you going to, if you do get into a place power or wherever you're going to, okay, well, here, I can help, I can help this guy out, one of my mm. buddies or something out. We'll get you a job over here get you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like the same mm -hmm. thing if you're running in something in town or something, you're helping, okay, yeah, I could maybe squeeze this in, squeeze that. I think a lot of people, <laughs> That's interesting. I think a lot of people yeah. that I know right mm -hmm. now do that, mm -hmm. you know? So like, yeah, I'll now, now you, you just right go people. up to the, now you go up to the uh, government level. And so you're working with kind of the same type of people. It's just different people. This is what I, I feel like the difference is that when you, the idea of government, is to look out for the interest of the people. The idea is that you have a certain responsibility that comes with leadership over the country, as yeah. opposed to helping out my friend, <laughs> you know, over somebody else because I know somebody. That's always been a thing. It's a thing in Nashville. It's a thing in LA. Yep. Everybody's always kind of like, yeah, I'll call my buddy and you'll get hired immediately. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> you know? But the government... <laughs> Is it shouldn't have that in there, but it is. No, but it is. Yeah, and yeah. it's always going to be like that mm -hmm. on some level. And I, I think the thing that I liked about uh, about um, Oliver's uh, song was was the fact that I didn't know how I felt about it at first, but he got he said he got irritated at um, uh, that he he received a certain fan base immediately from a specific political party. Oh yeah, right? I see that. And then he was like, uh, this is a little ironic because <laughs> you know, I'm really talking about everybody collectively, mm -hmm. like, you know, on on all sides. Um and uh it's true. I mean, that's only kind of come out in the last maybe 10 years maybe or something like that where we've all kind of started to get all this information and go wow, it's you know, no side is is necessarily it's perfect. Yeah. Matter. Yeah. So, but I'll tell you what, I mean, one thing that I think we should all agree on is the fact that, you know, what you did was phenomenal. Um, we've got to, we've got to take care of our, our guys that are out, you know, serving and, and, uh, have a, a love for this country. And, uh, if that's not something that we can't agree on, <laughs> we're hopeless. Like that should be a no brainer. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's it's hard to see, I guess, at some points, because like I got I got like three different perspectives that I kind of see through, you know. And one yeah. of them is like three, sort of. So 
so well, all right one of them is okay yeah our country needs to change in a lot of ways so i can see what they're why some people are kind of mad at the country and so that so they're not as patriotic as patriotic as you know what they should be mm -hmm. or what i feel like they should be right but i can see why they're a little upset at it right now but then now you got another perspective you go but check out what we've been what we our country has created from like before you know you want to go back to slave days you, you know what i'm saying yeah like not not slave days in the united states but slave days i mean over there work for the freaking king you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like yeah i know what uh, you mean. And so like that's huge to grow out of so you got to respect that part aspect of it and uh but then then see even same on the oliver anthony song here's kind of the other perspective because like because people have asked me why i haven't sang about that or why haven't i uh kind of made a uh, political song it's because part of me is also like like then then change it you know why aren't you running you know you're gonna sit here and just argue 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 about all these people and all this and just sit there and just continue on in a conversation but what are you doing to talking about it okay cool <laughs> that ain't going no like mm. someone's got to be a guy that you know ends up saying i'm gonna do this i'm gonna get it done you know mm. and then just go you know yeah. trump i think did was pretty cool and coming in and just being like i'm gonna get this kind of thing done and that's why a lot of people liked him i think but uh mm. So some sometimes while I'm hearing people talk about the Oliver Anthony song stuff too, I'm like, okay, you can keep complaining or you can, I don't know, learn that or you know, get mm. some more knowledge or better better yet, understanding, mm. and then uh, go try to do something. What is what is your life for? What are you here for? You know, maybe if you're you know if you're that um, set on it, then go try to do that instead of work at Kmart or. I don't even know if Kmart's still around, but you know, go work at Kmart. <laughs> you need to go down to the Woolworths. Yeah, go down to the Woolworths. <laughs> Boy, I went back about but, two or three more decades in Kmart. You know, I see. I start to see it more too, kind of getting into the uh, uh, country music and like just kind of uh, chasing my dream. Mm -hmm. And then, like other, you know, you know the oh, that's that, uh, that must be nice. Those, those people that must be oh, nice dude, guys. I hate those guys. It's like, yeah, well, maybe if you freaking put the time in, or yeah, should they go on? I worked for this you too. You know, yeah, what are you, uh, or it's same to you. Like, okay, there's parts of it that you know is the natural gift or whatever of singing or doing whatever, but a lot of it's practice, practice, practice. Like mm -hmm. playing it, playing that song two hundred times before even showing someone, then playing it a thousand more times just to get you know. But it's like, mm -hmm. oh, you just play it so easy. You're just lucky. I'm like. Mm -hmm. the fucker you know <laughs> but, you know i don't know i kind of go through those kind of three perspectives though and sit there and you know i don't know man yeah yeah i can understand i can understand the the different angles but mm -hmm. i'm like yeah i think you just got to put get some um uh what's that i'm, I'm trying to freak you i didn't do my crossword today I, I, my words are bad I do like the crosswords, <laughs> Thomas Joseph Toff crosswords. But anyhow, uh, take responsibility, you know, yeah, like yeah. for your own or just for for the country. Like mm -hmm. who's taking responsibility for this country? No mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. They're always saying it's the government or it's this or this or this pushing. But like, what? I don't know. What's what's your what's your portion? You know, what's your what's your portion? Like, I try to do my portion. I'm still kind of trying to do my portion. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are really good at that. I think they can kind of see that, but. So is all I that kind of lost. why you stay away from, like, do you try to stay away from certain topics or write and sing sometimes, about certain things? Sometimes. Because I, well, because sometimes I, I get annoyed at talking about it because it's mm. the same circle of, like, the it's same true. same thing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, this is a waste of my time. <laughs> this is a waste of my thought in it's my so, head. It's so true. Like, I, like it's just. Yeah the thought waste or something i don't know <laughs> it's because it's like okay i already know that i already know that uh perspective or that what's the point of you know what's the point of talking me talking to yeah re talking re talking so yeah so, but mm -hmm. i don't know if, if it's for use you know that's pretty cool but mm -hmm. uh i don't necessarily try to stay away from it i just uh i don't know uh i like if i if i do talk about it i want to be able to make sure that i get i get a my thought in there and mm fool maybe before it's taken and used some way you know or twisted yeah. but I, yeah yeah 
because it'll be like you'll say one thing like you're saying they're all everyone's like kind of angry or immediately ready to get get at each other mm -hmm. and so if you if you try to say something can you just say that beginning part boom they're they're, they're starting to try to over talk and everything like that before you could even say the whole your whole thought yeah so was, you yeah know. yeah but <laughs> i yeah i know what you're saying i because i <clears throat> there have been times where i've been like uh I've been uh, tempted to to do certain uh, videos and stuff, you know, uh, and comedy things that that deal with a lot of the stuff going on. And I, I've tr it's it's hard because we all mm -hmm. have opinions now. Now everybody's opinionated, and we want to like let everybody know what our opinions are. But I've tried really hard to stay out of that and mm -hmm. to kind of stay away from it because. I found that, like you said, it's a circle all the time. And what happens is people are always on social media learning about the same stuff over and over and over and fighting with people, arguing with people. I like knowing, I think that people can can watch some of my videos or like right right now, like this, like just listen and enjoy, have a good time. It doesn't have to have like, you know, a major agenda affiliated with it. And they can just kind of listen and learn something, laugh, have a good time. Mm -hmm. It's like like yeah. your music. I like your music too because you can really you can have a good time listening to it. You know, mm -hmm. it's fun. Uh, it's lighthearted, and um, like you said, you know that that line in your um, in your song about um, you know the bonfire and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the the point of it is you're having a good time. Yeah, and you can you can try to find some different you know meaning, but that's not really what it is. Mm -hmm. And see, so even the second verse, I don't know if you've heard that one, but it's kind of on the same thing. Cause it's like, uh, you could go with the flow, you could go mm -hmm. against the grain, yeah. you could cut your own damn path just as long as you stay in your own lane. Meaning, yeah. like, don't go messing with somebody else's freedom now. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah. But you know, that's yeah, man. And so, yeah, just coming anywhere you go. You know, it's just a bonfire. You know, we're going to the bonfire, so it's not the church thing, but it's like ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, did, did you get like some of your? Uh, did you get some of your? Um, do you think you're you're who you are today because your mom and dad raised you a certain way? Um, sure, probably every little part, every part of it. Um, not just getting raised that way. I think uh, you know, even the time in the navy. Uh, that yeah. all the different yeah. people I meet, because some yeah. you you learn some things from like some people that are like the dumbest person you know, but you learn stuff from them. Yeah, and then you know you learn stuff from really smart people as well. Dude, but. I have a I have a uh, I'm gonna be very I'm not I almost was gonna drop names here. I'm not gonna, <laughs> but I'm not going to. But there's somebody in my family who. Oh man, they, this person, I'm also going to try really hard not to reveal the sex of this person, uh, cause I don't want my family to, but this person second run, had man. a, was on a certain path as a child. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. And it was a good path. It was the right path. So everybody was supportive of this person until this person grew up and went to college and came out at the other other end of it a completely different person mm. and everything shifted everything right um and it was so wait what were we talking about a second ago you're talking about uh learning the way that you're learning is the same person you become i got a good answer for you yeah uh, you know, Jake knows who I'm talking about. Go ahead. So I think sometimes when people learn this, like it's the difference between knowledge and understanding. So you, a lot of people learn knowledge, but they don't learn the understanding. So they're doing something for because they're told to do it or because it's they, they've been told that this is what's right. But yeah. they don't have the understanding of why that's right. Oh, yeah. So then right. if you learn, if you kind of grow up and you only learn knowledge, then your whole foundation is just based on those with no understanding. So that sh shift can go really fast and like you could a whole now, different person change. Is that what, ha is that what you think happens with people who go into college? 
sometimes <laughs> Just, uh, like universities on, and stuff on like, like changing their wh who they yeah, are they kind completely of, come out like they were raised a certain way and then they go to college they learn the knowledge of college mm -hmm. and then they come out at the other end a completely different like unrecognizable is that that's got to be what happens right it's, i would think i think i mean it's 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 all a mental shift right so where did that mental shift come from something in their foundation wasn't set stead fast you know what i'm yeah, saying like something yeah. wasn't strong in that and the and so right uh, now they might still be lost they I, may I have know shift, what it was they may have shifted over to a, a whole different way but their foundation is can just as easily be shifted back yeah you know it's and because understanding is going to be truth yeah so once once they find that boom now they know there's a piece that i can put in my foundation but if you don't have truth or understanding in your foundation then you're just going off of what you hear i think that's what it is and i almost think that truth and understanding is more important than knowledge because it brings me back to what you said mm -hmm. a minute ago when you said i have you said i think you said something along the lines of you learned you've learned things from like the dumbest person out there right well i so have i we all have and and i think what that is is there's a lot of uneducated people out there who have truth and understanding and those people understand something I like to call common sense. <laughs> there are common sense issues that are no longer common sense to a lot of people. Now you mm -hmm. have to think much deeper and, and you have to get a, a, a college degree to truly understand what's going on. And I just, I don't believe that. We were actually not even founded to be that. We were supposed to be a bunch of like, <laughs> there were, what was, what was there? A bunch of farmers working in the fields. You know, there was like, we were taking care of our own stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We had to figure things out because God gave us the understanding to just know certain things. But now everybody's just digging deeper and trying to like find out different meanings for stuff. And it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Or some, so, yeah, it could be good. It could be bad, you know, because digging deeper to find more for something, they might overturn something and be like, whoa, like, like, uh, what was it? Tes or Tesla freaking finding wireless a transmission or radio unless you want to call it marconi but i'd say tesla anyhow uh like wireless transmission you know to uh like <laughs> so nerd out here <laughs> okay that's no, good go ahead no. so you know with like how how long was the world around before we started using that and that's whole totally changed the world yeah like uh just i mean we can talk on cell phones now not just that but you can before that it still was just scope moving slow and so everything from like all all your radio transmissions and stuff mm -hmm. even like do you remember life without a cell phone uh yeah I, was, I think i was 16 on my 16th birthday i got a cell phone i already got the one it was like the cheapest one and then like two years later i got to get the motorola razor so I was, you know the <laughs> cool little you know look slick it was like the I, iphone of its day you yeah know? yeah but yeah when i, I was I, a kid um Somebody told me, um, what do you call being trapped in a closet with Dolly Parton? Mm -hmm. And I said, I didn't know. And they said, a booby trap. <laughs> I, thought that was, I thought that was pretty funny. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I thought, you know, she and she, I heard her in an interview one time uh, say that she had a real good sense of humor think, about all that stuff. Like yeah. she would always joke around and stuff. So that's good. I think I'm having Kent or lunch with Kent tomorrow. So tell, him that, tell him that. Tell him that. I'm sure he, he's <laughs> he probably heard, heard it. He's a probably thousand. heard all of them. He's like, yeah. oh, here we go. He'll probably be like, I invented that joke. I, I'm the one who started that. That's, a, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, and so like, I've, I've waited to have kids. I haven't tried to have kids yet or anything. I try to wait, uh, maybe, maybe one more year. Oh yeah. Uh, but also cause like, this is just kind of finishing up, I guess on that thought It's like, um, the way you, you know, you train someone or, or raise them. However, yeah. if, if you only raise them by just giving them knowledge, mm -hmm. then they're not very strong. Mm. But if you raise them by trying to sh get them understanding, oh yeah, then you know what I'm saying. Then now, then then their brain can work and come up with ideas that your brain hasn't thought of because your brain, with the understanding you have, has already filtered through, yeah, you know your eyes. But are your parents? Your parents are both still living today. Mm -hmm. They, I feel like they did a good job raising you. 
Uh, they, you were homeschooled, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, are you grateful for that? Do you feel like you missed out on anything? Um, there's things that was, uh, probably really good. And then things that probably not. So like, it was like, even listening to music, it was like either like thirties, forties country or, mm -hmm. uh, or hymnals. So like Waylon and all those guys, like it, uh, we, we didn't really listen to them. Mm. Uh, and like a lot of other country music, you know, I've missed out on. So there's like, there's still times that I'm in in a place and everybody knows the song and I'm like, uh, mm. you know? Yeah. So there's times like that or heard of someone. So there's, there's a bad part, right? There, there kind of could give me a, um, you know, a con or whatever. Yeah. Just not knowing, you know? Right. Uh, but then on the other side, you, I get, you get more time to your kind of self in your own brain to, you know, you know, figure out who you are, what you are, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's, that was really cool. And then um, learning, learning to know what is truth and what is just thought or opinion. That's, you get that in there, you know, which I think that a lot of people miss that right now. And they, a lot of times they're taking their opinion is, is truth. And it's like, okay, cool. You can think that that's probably what's true, but it's still an opinion. Like know that. Yeah. Cause I, if I'm going to, talk about an opinion or whatever i it's called it i'm saying it's an opinion because i could be wrong like but people are trying to force their opinion as if it's truth anyways you don't get as yeah D discerning the difference between that is something cool that my brain got or picked up on yeah. <laughs> you know yeah so uh mm -hmm. and then yeah uh uh i think uh, it probably makes me more creative because um some of the things that have already kind of that a lot of people have grown up with in like uh, public schools and whatnot, they kind of see th things a lot the same way. And then uh, since I never really saw that, I still just see it in whatever way that my brain decides to imagine it, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that that's a good thing in a lot of ways. But I think it helps me be more creative, like in uh, writing and, you know, uh, songs and stuff. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a good thing in every way. I think, yeah. yeah, that's cool, man. Did you you was a uh, uh, public school? Me, uh, I was yeah. I I was a Christian. I was in a Christian school. Uh -huh. I was raised in a Christian school, but I, I went to a public school in junior high, and I <clears throat> I didn't like it. I mm. thought I was gonna like it. Some of my friends in the Christian school had just skipped over to. They talked their parents into letting them go to a public school. That was the thing, like. I went to a Christian school that had these desks with like dividers in them. So you had like, it's almost like walking into like a, a, like an office building where people have their own desks and like cubicles. It's kind of like that, believe it or not. Like the okay. whole room was filled with kids that had their own little desk with dividers up and they a have board a in flag front. to stick up in case yeah. you had to raise your hand. Yeah. What? Dude, how do you know this? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I'm just, uh, have you ever been in one? Uh, there's one uh, in Eufaula, Texas that I've seen before. Yeah, you had the little like flag. That. Like if you needed if you, something, mm -hmm. you had a little red flag. You had to put it up on, <laughs> the, on thing. the thing. It was like like raising your hand or Dude, something. Dude, I can't believe. I've never. I don't. I can't believe you know what that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's bizarre. And actually, they thought it was a good thing because kids would be able to focus on their work. Mm -hmm. But we just dinked around all day you know because you're nobody can see you in this <laughs> you little thing to. so you were we were like taking like needles and stuff like that and we were like poking them in our skin and remember doing that yeah. you know yeah you yeah, like yeah. Or open, you get the little, open up your hand you get the little tiny yeah you poke it right through where yeah, it's on the outside of in your, there yep. you know and one time and you had push pins <laughs> you could have push pins in there and you had like a cork board right in front of you so when your work was done or whatever you could like stick something to the cork board or whatever and then but you had a whole box pencil box full of like um little uh push pins mm -hmm. so you take those push pins and stick them in your hand and you could like have little hands full, and you could do this and they're all stuck to you under your skin the first <laughs> layer of skin and stuff and you could do that That's sweet. and then the teachers would get so mad at you but you know it was funny this one time Dude, this one time, uh, my my mom, the A and W restaurant used to sell. The, they had these little um, these little whuppets, and they were mm -hmm. called whuppets. And it was like these little pom pom balls with little um, eyeballs glued to the outside of them, and little feet. 
So they were like these little characters, you know? And when you got like a kid's meal, you would get these little weapons. Well, uh, uh, <coughs> one time I was in uh, school, in class, and whenever the teacher wasn't looking, we'd take the, you know, we all had these weapons because we all went to the a and so we would throw them across the room and stuff like that, you know, mm. which is highly illegal in our school. Sin. So uh, <laughs> I'll never forget this one time, dude. I did nothing wrong all day. I did get in, I got into quite a bit of trouble, but I had nothing wrong all day. I don't think I did. And then I had this whoopet and I went right there. And dude, I, I carefully and concisely planned it out. I knew that when Mrs. Miller turned around to face a chalkboard, mm -hmm. that I, I would have just enough time to do it and then immediately come back down into my desk. Well, I go like this. I go, whoops. And for whatever reason, when the, as soon as the whoopet leaves my hand, she decided to make a quick turnaround. So she turns around and she sees this little thing leave my fingertips and I just looked at her like this. <laughs> and, dude, you're going to think I'm making this up. If my mother, God rest her soul, was here, she would confirm this story because she was the secretary of the downstairs, okay, at the school. Mm. And Mrs. Miller, dude, I swear you could have seen smoke coming out of her nose. <laughs> she was so mad. She looked at me as if, like, I beat up some kid or something. She comes over to me. She grabs me with one hand to my ear. Mm -hmm. She grabs my arm with her other hand, and she starts dragging me out of the room. Dude, I went to a crazy school. She drug me. She took me down the stairs past my mother where my mom worked, and she looked at my mom, and she goes, Phil, can I speak, you, speak to you in the back, please? Took me all the way to the back principal's office. Dude, the principal wasn't there, but the vice principal was. And um, had the principal been there, I would have got spanked. Probably paddled with the mm -hmm. with the with the paddle. It looks like a ping pong paddle, but it, it didn't feel like one. It was like solid wood, and it had like a hole in the middle of it so that the wind could go through it and it could go faster. Yeah. And um, I will never forget the look of on the vice principal's face when she told him the story. I'm sitting there. My mom's like thinking. My son just like killed somebody to yeah. get this kind of reaction, right? <laughs> There's marks on my arm. Dang. And she tells him the story. And she tells him the story exactly how it actually happened. So she says, yeah, he knew right from wrong. I turned my back. He threw some toy out and I watched it leave his fingertips. <laughs> Dude, the look on his face, he didn't know what to say. He was so uncomfortable. Yeah. So finally, anyway, he was like, um, Perry was his last name, Vice Principal Perry. He was a, he was a good man. But then after she she said, excuse, well, well, I'll handle this, and she was excused and went back to her to the class, and I had to stay down there with my mom. I didn't get a spanking because he goes, now, Vel, my mom. You know, uh, Cindy's been through, she's been through a lot. So they were already like trying to take the side of the teacher, like blaming it on like her. So it was crazy. Then, her then give her the boot. What is she doing taking care of kids? I'll never forget that as long as I live. Yeah. She, she was weird though, man. She, she would make people do all kinds of really weird stuff in front of the class. Is that like a punishment or something? And stuff. Yeah. Like Ugh. you got to eat. You got to eat a lemon in front of the class because you said something you shouldn't have said. It's like, uh, what? So you, wait, uh, it reminds me of what's that one movie, Matilda? Is it Matilda or Miss Crunchable or something? Yeah. 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 Kind of reminds me of that. But, uh, Matilda, yeah. Uh, what do you think that is? Uh, that, that someone get, like, do you think that spite? Like, because their brains are thinking, like, uh, man, this guy's doing it to try to get me so like yeah. do you think that's what her brain was going through she's like he threw it i saw his fingertips it left him she did it just because of me like just to try to you know yeah instead of like you're just having fun or doing something like yeah like what she weird... took it personal or something yeah. for some yeah. reason i don't i i get i guess so i mean nobody ever really knew <laughs> but she stayed working at that school for way too long i just Dang. remember 
and but Christian schools back in the day were like different than I think most of them are Probably today. Now, yeah, and there, it wasn't just a bunch of bad memories. We had a lot of good, a lot of good memories from being in that curriculum at that school too. Century was the name of the school, Lodi, California. And um, but yeah, that little flag, man. I <laughs> I remember we had all the time to ourselves. They were really getting us ready. Looking back, they were getting us ready for the workforce. Mm-hmm. They're like, listen, ev- eventually you're going to end up back here working in this little cubicle yeah. with papers and pens. <laughs> I'm like, this is what so we may as do. well do it now and get it this, all over so with. Come back here and do it here. <laughs> yeah. Sure enough, man, in my 20s, I was selling car insurance from a, a, a cubicle and everybody had one in the whole on the whole floor. Everybody had a cubicle. Dang. But uh, yeah, man, it's funny that you knew about that, though. It's called the mm-hmm. ACE system. Yeah, you okay. know, and they had these little. I think I did. Uh, what's the test? Uh, you kind of do. Um, we might have done some of the ACE test kind of at the end of year, okay? Or something to like okay. see where we ranked with every but ACT. Oh, oh, that- oh, oh, yeah, that's different. That's different. That's different. So the ACE system, okay, it, or they called it the ACE system, was uh, your system was was uh based on paces. They called it paces. Uh. A pace was a very thin, skinny book, okay, with just, you know, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 pages in it, and you wrote in the book. So it had a whole bunch of, like, your work stuff was inside, you got a pencil, and you went through, and you did all your work that way. Okay. So anyway. We had a... It was... Now we got this going on outside. We got this... Yeah. We got the plow. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna... Hey, we're gonna go because uh, we got a... We got a, a tractor outside. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, listen, we're on a farm. What yeah. What are you going to do? It's not going to be that bad? Okay. I don't want to chop any, just so you know, I never want to chop anything out. Now, earlier when we when we split for like five minutes, <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little awkward. We'll be back. Mm-hmm. Sweet. There you go. Nice. Oh, smart. Good. What do you guys do? Record yeah, that's live great. and then cut after or how? Yeah. So, well, what we're going to do is like everything that we do is going to be done in its entirety. Like I don't want to chop mm-hmm. any segments out of anything. I just feel like it's more like real and raw and, you know, no matter what, we'll be able to. Even I saw you getting some footage of the thing like earlier. That'd be cool to stick in there. Um, oh, yeah. So, dude, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. been fun talking to you. It though, was and, uh... and yeah, this is ahead. the more the most I've this obviously the most I've talked to you. Yeah, I think so. Since um, you know, since since, since meeting that. you, let's uh, let's do it next time. Will you come back? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Definitely. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it next time. Yeah, because we're gonna do this whole we're gonna do this whole thing where the artists come and we do little performances mm-hmm. on the yeah. stage, and uh, we're gonna cut that together That's as a separate sweet. release. Yeah. yeah, that'll be great. Uh, Thank yeah. you for. Um, Watching, listening to the Jack Vale show from John, the place that Johnny Cash called the center of his universe. Pretty epic, right? It is. It's pretty iconic place. It's pretty sweet. Um, hope to have you back. Any any last uh, any last words or anything? Yeah, uh, I guess just for anybody who's listening, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Cody Howell Country. That's Cody my tagline. Howell for Country. My ads for Instagram, Facebook, and well, did you keep Cody Howell Country on everything? I was able to get it on everything except for Twitter, I think. What's Twitter? It, X, I guess now. Yeah, exactly. No, but what's... No, I'm, I mean, what... what oh, if, what is Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> Dang. I thought you were just throwing shade, man. Oh, uh, what like, is... Okay. Tw- I'm sorry, what? What is Twitter? Uh, no. Uh, See if you can I talk over this guy. Music, but <laughs> Shut up! X or what? I think it's... Uh, I got to check here because I... I'm starting to get I'm starting to get better at all uh c- getting all my um, it's okay. what Cody Howell music on Cody Howell on music on X. everything else is Cody okay. Howell Country. Everything else is Cody Howell Country. So Cody yeah. Howell Country on everything except X. X is Cody Howell music. Perfect. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much. You got to check this guy out cuz he's amazing. I love your stuff. Love your voice. And um yeah, yeah, big big things, man. Cool. Watch and see. One year from now, we'll have you <laughs> back and it'll be huge. Be cool. See ya. Cool man. Dude, Kiss my cat. Dude, what in the world?